Well, praise the Lord. We are on again for a wonderful time in the Lord, for a wonderful time, hallelujah, in the word of the of the Lord the Lord is so powerful. The word of the Lord is so transforming. The word of the Lord is so lifting. And so this is what we want for you to receive today in the mighty name of Jesus. Be activated. Be transformed in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. This is yours truly. Shalewa coming from Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International. We are overseer is Apostle Dr. Kelafo calling my wonderful husband, a wonderful man of God, a man who knows how to revelate the word so powerfully. So I want to encourage you to get your Bibles ready because truly we are going to see our Lord and Savior, our Christ, from his word that he given us. Amen. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you this morning. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. We just magnify your name. We thank you for our King. We thank you, hallelujah, that you are a just God. We thank you that we are simply nothing, hallelujah, without you, because in you we live and move and have our being. And so as we take this time to reflect on your wonderful and powerful resurrection this morning lord god i pray for your saints all around the world father those who are even in locked in now those who may be dismayed those who may be in despair lord god i pray that you just give them hope this morning lord god let them be reminded lord god that their hope is in christ jesus this morning lord i pray for those who are on the front line lord jesus those who, oh God, we call essential workers, Father. Oh God, we just cover them with your blood this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we stir up every gift in them prophetically that you have placed in them, oh God, from before the foundation of the world, Lord God, that their gift make room for them this morning, Lord God, and that room which is made for them. Father, is for them to be a witness unto those who are sick, to be a witness unto those who they come to truly say that Jesus is Lord, so that you can be lifted up and men will be drawn unto you, Lord God. Let them not lose hope, Lord God. Let fear not overtake them in the mighty name of Jesus, but be the author and finisher of their faith like you are. In the mighty name of Jesus, that their faith, hallelujah, will be uplifted and will transform those who are sick, will transform those who they are helping, Lord God, by putting their lives in the front line. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray this morning, Lord God, that that same power that rose Jesus from the dead, I pray, Lord God, that people experience that power this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I, I declare that as your word is going across the airway this morning, Lord God, that many will be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Oh, Father, so that what you did, hallelujah, when you arose, hallelujah, from that grave is not in vain in the mighty name of Jesus. We have seen that baptism with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And so that is what I declare over the airways this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. To be transformed. Glory be to the name of the Lord. I declare, hallelujah, that those of you who have been touched by that resurrection power, by that resurrection fire of the Holy Spirit, that you be reminded of it today and arise in your purpose, arise in your calling in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who have never felt that resurrection power, hallelujah, this is the reason why we are here. Glory be to the name of the Lord as saints of God, as generals, hallelujah, in the forefront. Oh God, to release, hallelujah, and to activate. Glory be to the name of the Lord. And I declare that it will be activated. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, I just pray that we decrease, hallelujah, this morning and you increase, Lord God. Less of us and more of you. Over every person that is lifting up the name of Jesus, oh God, in spirit and in truth. This morning, Lord God, every pastor, every minister, every fivefold leader, 
every saint lord god who is lifting and up the name of jesus and preaching oh god let those who are you lord god let them see you in the power of your might lord jesus oh god let your holy spirit rest upon them in Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah, that even they themselves are surprised, Lord God, because of how you will move and how you will transform and how you will purge, hallelujah, the lives of your people this morning, Lord Jesus. And so, Father, we just give give you all the glory we give you all the honor hallelujah 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 this morning we thank you lord god for what you did hallelujah on the cross but what you did after you came down off of that cross jesus and so we bless you we lift up your holy name we say that we love you now and forever thank you for loving us thank you for drawing near to us lord god and thank you for what you're about to do this morning we pray lord god over apostle as he comes to bring this word lord jesus oh god we have heard him minister oh god about the resurrection power but father i release a fire upon him this morning lord god like never before and father made this fire cause your word hallelujah oh god to be realized to in your people cause their eyes to be open as they follow along cause them to receive the revelation of un an understanding of who you are and the purpose of what you did this morning lord jesus Recover him with your blood from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord God. And we thank you that because of your blood, hallelujah, the enemy cannot penetrate us in any way, Lord God. And so for this, we won't stop to give you praise. We cover the homes of all of those who are watching this morning. People of God, those of you who are sick in your bodies, hallelujah. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your faith be activated as we touch and agree, hallelujah, with you. For healing to take place this morning. Be healed in your mind in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed in that bone area, that bone structure in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed in that vein. Hallelujah. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse your blood this morning and be revived in Jesus' mighty and powerful name. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm just going to read our scripture this morning. Hallelujah. Our scripture. <clears throat> This morning is taken from the book of Colossians, hallelujah, Colossians, reading from uh, the second chapter from verse 13 to 17, hallelujah, and it reads, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, had he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. <clears throat> which was contrary to us and took it out of the way nailing it to the cross and having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an of an holy day or of the new moon or of the sabbath days which are a shadow of things to come but the body <clears throat> is of Christ in Jesus' name. And I just want to encourage you with a few scriptures, a few other scriptures this morning. Amen. From Hebrews 9 and 28, it says, So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time, apart from sin, but for salvation. Can you imagine that? How wonderful is he? The, because of what Jesus did, hallelujah, we are forgiven in him. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of, of sins according to the riches, hallelujah, of his grace, hallelujah. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of our testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death, Revelation 12 and 11. Hallelujah. Our judgment has been satisfied and we are at peace with God this morning. Can you tell me why? Hallelujah. It is because of what the word of God says in Isaiah 53 and 5. And it says, but he, hallelujah, was wounded for our transgressions. 
He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Let us give the Lord a hand clap this morning. By his stripes we are healed. Can you imagine that? Jesus is just so wonderful. And so in this holy time, I want to remember powerful that happened between now the, re the resurrection Sunday as we uh, call it and we're celebrating between now and the day of Pentecost on resurrection on the time of resurrection when Christ was resurrected from the dead that Holy Spirit hallelujah is what resurrected Jesus Christ amen he was resurrected from the dead and the Word of God says the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is in you and I and not only that he didn't just leave it there he told his, his disciples to tarry and then approximately 50 days from then then the holy the day of Pentecost came and again the Holy Spirit rests upon them amen so the Holy Spirit is just such a powerful mighty thing so as you think hallelujah of this time hallelujah remember the power of the Holy Spirit and what Jesus have done hallelujah we're just going to sing two songs hallelujah then we will proceed glory be to the name of the Lord with the name hallelujah of Jesus being lifted up this morning Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 there's just something about your name. Master, Savior, Jesus. Jesus. God bless you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Praise the Lord. It's so good to be with you. We are here today and this is Resurrection Sunday. To God be the glory and we want to jump straight into this word. Thank you so much, Shalewa, for that wonderful ministry. Thank you for that wonderful sharing in the presence of the Lord. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your power and your presence that is here. 
your power to heal, your power to deliver, your power to set free. We thank you for the powerful resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. We just love you. We just adore you. We sing praises to your name. We declare your kingdom and your power and your glory comes in this place. Even as it is here, let it be over all the earth. And we will never stop to give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's get straight into this word. We have already worshiped. I want to sing that piece one more time. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, that's it. There's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like a fragrance. After the rain, kings and kingdoms, they will all pass away, but there's something about, I want to send that part, there is something, there's just something about there's something there's just something about your name praise the lord let's get into this word this morning i am so excited <clears throat> dr kilafo here thank you for joining us i know you could be watching so many other things doing so many things with your time i'm thankful that you're here with us but I'm going to ask you something. I'm going to ask you kindly to get your Bibles, get your notepad, get your iPad, get your tablet, get your Android, because we're going to be jumping in the Word this morning, and I want you following along. I don't want you just taking what I say or anybody says today. I want to go into the Word of God. Why do I want to go into this Word? Because it is life-giving. I've been studying, and I have a, a Word from the Lord. I'm sure so many others do, but I'm telling you, we have a specific word from the Lord for our time and our lots of study. My God, we've been in tons of studies. We have so much studying to do, and we have so many teachings to do. Praise God. Why do I know this? Because first of all, I want to blood of Jesus, praise God. It is the blood of Jesus that made me whole, that cleansed me, that delivered me, that gave me hope and gave me strength to where I am today. And we've seen this in many nations around over 50 nations and growing. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, I've seen the power of God heal people, cast out demon spirits. I'm telling you, I've seen it. Some of you on this page, hallelujah, you've experienced the deliverance power of King of the Lord that he did through the ministry. And we have uh, planted, ordained, commissioned apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers around the world. Uh, too many to count now. And, and the kingdom apostolic, you are watching wherever you are around the world. But we just give the Lord praise. Thank the Lord. I am a witness that the blood of Jesus heals, delivers, and set free. And the blood is transforming the world. And we are on a mission to see the world transformed for Jesus. Secondly, I want to talk about the testimony of the blood of Jesus that's able to give hope today. This ministry has been founded on the blood of Jesus. We have seen many people healed, delivered, set free, renewed, saved, come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, living their lives around the world and in ministry and a good husband and family and, and friends. We testify that the blood of Jesus is real. Hallelujah. I've seen him in my own life and my own wife, family, and children, and home, and everything. We testify to the reality of the blood of Jesus. And if that's you, come on and say amen, Xenia. Good to see you. Lynette, God bless you. We testify to the blood of Jesus. So, hallelujah. I know there's power in the blood of Jesus. There, It is unmatched. I'm a witness of it. 
As a physician, I, I, I want to tell you that I testify to the resurrection. Praise God. You know, as a doctor, medical doctor, I've seen thousands of patients over the years, thousands of them. Hallelujah. I've seen them live. I've seen them die. I've seen many families touch. It is an honor, and I give the Lord glory, honor, and praise for the privilege to be a physician. And we're praying and thank the Lord for all of the people in the healthcare field who are just amazing and have been blessing God's people. And I'm telling you, the resurrection, I had to study it. You know why? Because as a doctor, it's difficult for a scientist and for a physician, especially to believe in the resurrection. Why? Because my God, uh, as good as we exercise and work out and do all of those wonderful things, and I encourage you to do that, there's a point in time, if you live long enough, you will die. And so death is very, very a part of the reality of what we see every day as a medical practitioner. And so to believe that someone would die and come back from the grave and live and still is living. Praise God. Today I want to talk about the power and the hope or the keys to the kingdom of God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I know that's long. The hope and the keys to the kingdom of God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have prayed already. Shalewa has read her scripture already and we're going to jump into the word of God. Why is that? Because I'm telling you as a doctor, you know, it takes a leap of faith to even understand the resurrection. But I found when I got the revelation that's tapped in the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, I've been transformed. Hallelujah. I, I, I began to live Many cannot live because they are still bound by death. As long as you're bound by death, you cannot live. As long as you're bound by the of life, the uncertainty of living, you cannot live in your fullness. And so that's why the power of the resurrection is so important. We're going to jump into this. Let's, I don't want to be late, um, um, continue this much longer. Let's go into 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, if you have your Bible, I'm telling you we're going through scriptures today. I'm going to ask you just to get your Bibles and follow along because we're going to dive into this word today. And if you want to like and share, that's up to you. I'd appreciate it. But we don't try to tell people this. You know, I see people come online and they, you know, they're just sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting. No, we're going to jump into this this morning. And uh, let me know if you're good and we are the 15 so we can get into this teaching this morning we're talking about the hope and the keys of the king found in the resurrection that's that's going to be awesome uh a key passage is first corinthians chapter 15 we're going to be reading one and almost all of it to the end this passage is loaded i'm telling you if you have any Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, atheist friends, you ought to call them and get them online. If you have any Satanist friends, if you have any agnostics or unbelievers, if you have anybody, you ought to jump into this. Why? Because, you know, Buddha, Confucius, Islam, Hinduism, none of them, I've studied them, none of them talks about resurrection. <laughs> none of them talks about what's going to happen when a person dies, well, some of them do. They tell their people some are going to come back as lizards and as frogs. They're going to reincarnate. I don't want to go and come back as a whale, praise God. I don't want to die and come back as a snake. I don't want to die and come back as a goat. That's a waste of time, praise God. But that's what they teach. Or some of them teach uh, that their followers are going to die and they're going to go into space and and disappear into oblivion. They're going to go into space and become a part of the cosmos. That, I don't want to become that. That's a waste of life. If I'm going to die and come back as some cosmic being, I might as well live my life to the fullest here because this is it. Praise God. If some people, my God, that's why so many people are bound and broken. Why? They have no hope. 
This shutdown has brought people to a place where they need hope. Why? Because let me tell you, if you are afraid of death, if death is the enemy of humanity, which it is, and you have no hope for what tomorrow holds, or what happens after death, if you are unsure, uncertain, it is scary. Yeah, it is frightening. The Muslims know it. We travel around the world. <clears throat> In Southeast Asia, the Muslim, the Hindus, they are searching. They're hungry. The Satanists believe Satan is going to raise them back up. Well, he's just deceiving them. Well, there are some people who just decide they're going to just forget about everyone and everything. They're so afraid. They feel, hey, I'm going to live this one life and after this, that's it. I'm going to enjoy my life. Some of them say, I'm going to YOLO, they call it. It's a new thing now. Young people, YOLO, live their life. You only have one life. That is a lie. You have two lives. <laughs> you have one here now that's on the center stage. And there is one after this. And determined by what we do in this life is going to determine what happens in our afterlife. But Jesus, my point is, Jesus Christ is the only person who describes in full the reality of what happens in life after death. I need you to help me follow this. Let me jump into something. Matthew, I told you 1 Corinthians. Hold your Bible there. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. You know the story. Jesus said, in verse 53, Matthew 27, are you there? Verse 53. Let's go to 52. And the graves were open. I'm telling you. I, I, I'm going to take the first five minutes to defend the reality of his resurrection. And it says, and the graves were open. The graves were open. When Jesus died, all the graves were open. open. Praise God. He had so much power in him that when he died, even those around who were dead, uh, the graves were open. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Now, I want to let you know, I, I, had to, I had to take time to see that. I studied that. I've never seen that before. Matthew 27, 52 says, When Jesus died, the graves of all of the people who died in him rose from the dead. My God, praise God. you got to get a revelation of that. There's so much power in his resurrection. There's so much power in his death. Let's go on. Verse 53. And came out of the graves after his resurrection. Not only did Jesus raise, he rose and others rose with him. Uh-huh. And went into the holy city and appeared unto many. When Jesus rose from the dead, the other saints that were uh, um, in the grave also got up and went about in the city. Now, can you imagine if you just had a funeral a few weeks ago, a few months ago, you, you had a lost loved one in your city, wherever you are around the world, you saw them bury that body, put them in the tomb, put them in the grave, and all of a sudden, you know, weeks later, days later, months or years later, praise God, during the time of Jesus, can you imagine going back? And when he died, and when he rose on the third day, not only did he stay in the tomb, but others rose up triumphantly. Praise God. And guess what they did? They didn't just stay there. They got up out of their graves. Bodies decomposed, came back together. Man, I'm telling you from a medical perspective. I'm just talking from a medical. I, can you imagine those bodies that were decomposed? All of a sudden, bones came back together. Joints, ligaments, tendons, all the inter internal organs came back together. Blood began to flow. Electrical impulse in the nerves began to flow. And bones and muscles came together. And they got up. 
and they walk throughout the city. What a time with that step. Can you imagine going in the food store and seeing people who were dead, who were saints, who were killed, who went on before walking in the food store? grocery store, going to the gas station, going to a family function. My God, this was the first evidence of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, the second point I want to make about the resurrection power. So the first key is Jesus has resurrection power in him. Now, we looked on last Friday on, on the Passover about the blood of Jesus. Now, the Bible said without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. It also says that the wages of sin is death. It means without any sin, a person cannot die. I want to help you with something. This is what makes Jesus so powerful. This is what makes Jesus so powerful. Without sin, a person cannot die. So what do you do with a person like Jesus who had no sin? The Bible said he walked the earth and he was without sin. How do I know that? I'm going through some scriptures this morning. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 1. You know the story. Genesis chapter 1. You know that God made Adam, he made him in his image and his likeness. He said, have dominion over the earth, verse 28, and he blessed them. And then Genesis chapter 2, verse 8, the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man and he formed him. And the Lord, you know the story, told Adam and Eve, do not eat of the fruit in the center of the garden. This is in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. I'm building up a powerful teaching on why the resurrection and what the resurrection means. Look at the fall of Adam. And the Lord, verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. Here it is. Adam was made in the image and likeness of God. Eve was taken out of him. They were both made in the image and likeness of God. I want to ask you what I asked the other day when I talked about the blood of Jesus. If Adam and Eve were born without father and mother, whose blood flowed through their bodies? <laughs> whose blood flowed through their bodies? They had the blood of God. Can I suggest that and show that to you in the word? They didn't have father and mother. God created them. Uh, uh, Adonai, the Elohim, Yeshua, uh, Yahweh, the living eternal God. They conjured together and they made a decision to make man in their image and likeness. And Jesus formed them and blew breath into his life. And Adam became a living soul. And he may pull Eve out of his body. And he said to them, you can eat of all of these fruit in the garden. Now, some people say apple. I don't see that in the Bible. They didn't eat an apple, praise God. They ate a fruit. And uh, they, they sinned. The Bible said they sinned. You know the story. Um, in Genesis chapter 3, verses the whole chapter, you read it when you get a chance. It said the serpent seduced and beguiled Eve. And his statement was 80% true. He said to Eve, did God say? You shall not surely die. I want to let you know Satan knew from the beginning that which we call sin. Sin is just missing the mark. It's, it's called rebellion to the word of God. The word of God came clearly to Adam and Eve, and they disobeyed it, and they died. I want to let you know, Jesus is called the second Adam. He, Adam was the first one. He died. But Jesus is the second Adam. And Jesus, we taught this on Good, on Good Friday. Jesus, because he was born, he did not have 
a father, a biological father. Joseph was not his biological father. Mary was his surrogate mother. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm so happy for these medical terms. We were watching a movie the other night, and, and they, this lady was a surrogate. <laughs> what a story. You know, it means they took the, the, the embryo, the fertilized ovum and, and they placed it in another woman to carry this baby for this other couple who couldn't conceive for whatever reason. My God, what a revelation this morning. Jehovah, Adonai, the Elohim, by the Spirit of the Lord, just took, similar to how he made Adam, but just at, with Adam, he made him a full man. Warm it up, warm it up. He made a full man in Adam, praise God, but in Christ Jesus, he took the embryo and he made Mary a surrogate. Do you know what that means? When Mary was brought forth and she was conceived, she became a surrogate mother and guess what happened to Mary? You doctors and medical people know, Jesus didn't have the blood or the DNA of an earthly father. So whose blood and DNA did he have, doctor? And medical science will tell you, it, the baby's blood and the mother's blood should not mix. It can be fatal and deadly. It can kill the baby. The mother is attached and the baby is attached to the womb inside the womb through the placenta some of you call it the afterbirth and through that the blood passes through the vessel and releases the nutrients to the baby and then the baby releases the 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 waste products through that placenta comes out through the mother but the bloods do not interact what am i saying jesus then had which blood whose blood did jesus have he had the blood of the eternal father. <laughs> Praise God. I'm helping you with resurrection this morning. So if the Bible said without the wages of sin is there, it means if Jesus lived sinless, which he did, he could not die. Ooh. According to spiritual laws, you need sin to die. Adam and Eve sinned. Through Adam and Eve, sin entered. I'm going to show you that in 1 Corinthians in a little while. That means all humanity have sinned. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Before we were even born, while we were being formed in our mother's womb, we had the nature of sin because of Adam. We had the nature of sinful Adam. Hallelujah. But praise God, Jesus was different. He did not have the earthly body, so he did not have the sin nature. <laughs> Praise God. That's what made him the Lamb of God. He was blemish-free. But we talked about that blood already. The blood that Jesus shed was pure and powerful. It's the only blood that can pay for the atonement or the redemption of sin. You got to watch that video on Friday. I taught it already. So, so, so his blood was sinless. That's why his blood is different from mine. <laughs> That's why if we take a vial of your blood, it's not going to wash the sin of humanity. If we take the blood of Moses, of Daniel, of David, of Elijah, if we take the blood of any human being in and around the world, it is not sufficient power, purity in that blood to save humanity. Not only does it save humanity once, but every single day for billions of people, whosoever will, that blood still has power 2,000 years ago to still cleanse, heal, forgive, renew, redeem, restore, reconcile humanity back to the Lord. Hallelujah. What a powerful blood. But that blood is so powerful, the blood of Jesus. It's the only blood that's accepted by the eternal Father for the remission of sin, the payment of sin for every human being. Praise God. If I didn't know Jesus, you know what I'd do right now? 
I'd get to know him. Praise God. If I didn't know this blood that can save, I would receive it right now. Praise God. So then, how does this how does this relate? How does this blood relate to Jesus' resurrection? Well, without the forgiveness of, well, that blood is so powerful that if a man, woman, boy, or girl, I'm telling you, doesn't receive it, they're lost forever. I'm getting into something. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. That blood that Jesus shed. And the life that Jesus lived sinless means that he didn't have the nature of Adam. And if he didn't have the nature of Adam, Jesus is not gonna, he wasn't gonna die. That's why Jesus said, No man takes my life, I lay it down. Hallelujah. I didn't understand that. But what Jesus was saying is, I am so pure. My blood is pure. My DNA is pure. My nature is so pure. Where there is no sin, there cannot be any death. So Jesus had to say, I lay down my life. No man takes away my life. I believe if Jesus didn't say on that cross, Father... Into my into your hands, I commit my spirit. I believe he would have stayed on the cross till today. Death could not touch him. The grave could not get him. He was so pure, he would have lived forever. He had to lay down his life. Praise God. The next point in the resurrection, the next key is... He had all power. He would have lived forever. The blood of Jesus is so alive that we read in Matthew 27 just now that when he rose from the dead, others rose with him. Next kingdom point, Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Because Jesus rose from the dead, he has all power in heaven and in earth. There is no other teacher, philosopher, Socrates, Plato. There is no other teaching of ancient religions around the world that can verify that they have all power. None of their wood or their idols or their gold. Or none of their gods that they made with their hands, none of their temples, none of their priests can give the assurance like Jesus. Jesus is the only one that says, I lay down my life. Not only did he lay down his life, he rose himself from the dead. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now that's the type of God I want to be following. What about you? So let's get into that key verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Stay with me. Get somebody on because we're going to dive into this quickly. Then we're going to pray. Why? Because this resurrection power is going to flow in your life and it's going to explode something. Everything that was holding you back in fear, everything that held your life captive, every sin that entangled you, everything that oppressed your life, everything that was a bondage to your liberty, you just know that, hey, I, I can't get free to live life. I'm afraid of Corona. I'm afraid to travel. I'm afraid to die. I'm afraid to live. That's going to be broken today. As you receive this resurrection power, as you receive this word today, your life is going to be transformed and you're about to live. Praise God. You better tell somebody, get online quickly and listen to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 50. I want to talk about the evidence right here of the appearance of Jesus. Now, if Jesus had just risen from the dead uh, and, and only a few people saw it, I would have been a little concerned. But I want, I'm happy some lawyers and police are here. God bless you. Here's what I, I'm going to present to you almost six or seven witnesses, evidences that Jesus did raise from the dead. You see, because had Jesus just rose from the dead alone, it would have been hard to believe if only his disciples saw it, only the 12. Do you know that Jesus was seen of almost six, 700 people after his resurrection? 
Hallelujah. I'm going to show you. What are you talking about, man of God? I never saw that. Well, I'm happy you asked. Get your Bibles. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Oh, my God. Get in there. Let's talk about the evidence and the eyewitnesses that Jesus rose from the dead. He is such a loving God. He didn't leave it just to his disciples. He knew they would have still doubted him. He knew they would have not trusted him. And so this is what he did. 1 Corinthians chapter 50 and verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I have preached unto you. Paul is talking. Which also ye have received and wherein you stand. Verse 2. 1 Corinthians 15. By which also you are saved. Next point. We are saved by his resurrection. If Jesus stayed in the grave, we would have all been lost today. If you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. If you don't believe in his resurrection, you are lost and you're in vain. Verse 3, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried, 1 Corinthians 15 and 4. And again rose the third day according to the scripture. Now medical science said by the fourth day the body would decompose and stink it. Hallelujah. By the, so Jesus didn't even, he didn't want death to set into his body. Now he could have done it. Remember Jesus rose Lazarus on the fourth day. Glory to God. You got to understand why he did that. Jesus was asked by Mary and Martha. Why didn't you come? And Jesus said, this is for the glory of God that I let Lazarus stay in the tomb. On the fourth day, Jesus said, roll the, stroll, uh, um, the, the, the tomb away. Mary and Martha said, but master, are you going to raise him? He said, yes, I will. Mary said, I know. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Mary said, I know you are the resurrection and Lazarus will raise on the final day. My wife and I, we were watching the story of John yesterday. I was so excited. Mary had a revelation of the resurrection that people today don't have. Praise God. I mean, while Jesus was alive, can you get that? Mary said, I know you are the resurrection. And there is a coming resurrection and you're going to raise Lazarus. Jesus looked at her and said, Mary, Mary, Martha, sisters. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm going to raise him now. Praise God. So Jesus went to the tomb and he told him, you know the story, Lazarus arise. And Lazarus came forth on the fourth day after the body was stink and decomposed and death had settled in. His molecules, his atoms were destroyed. Now that was not the first time Jesus rose anyone from the dead. He rose a young widow's son from the dead. Praise God. He rose Lazarus from the dead. What was he doing? Well, Elijah rose a widow's son from the dead too. And if Jesus was going to be a greater prophet, he had to do even more resurrection. I want you to get that. What makes Jesus' life different? I studied it and the Bible says, we're going to get to it, Jesus is the first begotten from the dead. And I prayed, I said, Lord, what is the first begotten from the dead? You know, last night I asked that to the Lord. And the Lord says, son, I'll show you. I went through scripture and I've seen where one of the titles of Jesus, even in Revelation, is the first fruit from the dead, the first begotten from the dead, he who was dead and now is alive in Revelation. I said, Lord, what do you mean by that? Jesus and the spirit of the Lord said to me, I'm the first one who not only died, but I'm the first one who died and rose from the dead and is still living forevermore. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo! I jumped in my spirit last night. Because when I studied scripture, I said, Lord, many people died and rose from the dead. Elijah rose people from the dead. Abraham was about to kill his son. Because... Here's this for this is a nugget for you. Abraham was going to kill Isaac because he said in his heart, Abraham said in his heart, I know that if I kill my only begotten son, that God, you are able to raise him from the dead. Oh my God. And right when he was about to stop, Isaac, the Lord stopped him. 
and say, you got it. You know what the Lord showed me? Abraham a understanding and a revelation of resurrection before even Jesus came. Praise God. He knew that the almighty God Yahweh Adonai, the Elohim of creation, he knew that if he had run that knife, that sword through his only son who the Lord Adonai promised him that he was able to resurrect him and when he did that, the Lord said, stop Abraham, I'm going to make a covenant with you because you understand me, you are a man of faith. Not only because he believed God for a son, but because he said, I know you, read it, read it. And so when we look at Jesus, I said, Lord, all through the scripture, there are many who died and rose from the dead. What made you so different? I asked him stuff like that, Paul. I asked him stuff like that. And he said, I am the only one, we're going to read it, who died, who rose from the dead, and who never died anymore and is still living forevermore. I am the resurrection. Oh, God. Woo, praise God. Verse 4, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 4. And after that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to scripture. Watch this, verse 5. And he was seen of Cephas. Number one, Jesus was seen of Cephas, one person. Number two, and of the 12, that's 13 people. Verse 6, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 6. After that he was seen of above 500 brethren. Not individually now, watch what it says. At once, get your Bible, 1 Corinthians 15 and 6. This is the evidence of the, the resurrection. He was sick. Now, if one person saw him or the 12 emotional disciples, they could have made up a story and said, Jesus rose from the dead, ran and told Pilate and the disciples and the other followers of Christ around Jerusalem. And, you know, people might have doubted it. But Jesus is, let me tell you something. Jesus is not afraid of his resurrection power. What do I mean? He did not leave it up to just the 12. My God, he loved them, but he just didn't trust leaving this assignment to them. This assignment of his resurrection was too important. He didn't leave it to them. He saw and appeared to 500 of the believers wherever they were gathered all at once to prove his existence. You better read 1 Corinthians 15. And whom the greater part remained to present. When Paul wrote Corinthians, he said some of those 500 that saw Jesus when he rose from the dead was living and walking among them at that time. Glory to God. I always wondered why is it that they were willing to get their heads cut off to the apostles? Why were the Christians ready to die and be uh, thrown to the lions and fed to the wild dogs, why they were willing under Nero to be burned. Oh God, as human touches, why did Nero and the Roman Empire and even, hallelujah, the Sadducees and Pharisee Pharisees were willing to kill him, kill the early church, but they had so much power, they had so much conviction, they had so much intensity to shake the world. It's because they saw not only the living Jesus, but the resurrected Lord. Oh, I pray we see the resurrected Lord. Whatever's in your life and mine, whatever faithlessness we've come out of, when we see and are touched by the resurrected Jesus, we will be on fire. My God. Woo! Watch that. That's 500 plus 12 plus 1. All right, so that's Cephas, the 12, that's 13, 500 other brethren. Watch this, 513, 7, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 7. After that, he was seen of James, that's 14 to 5. Apostles, that's 12 more, praise God. And last of all, he was seen of Paul himself. Paul saw him, Saul, who became Paul, as one born out of due season. Praise God. All right, Stick, keep, keep your hands in 1 Corinthians 15. We're coming back to that. Let me read some scriptures here. And to proving the existence and the reality of his resurrection. 
In Matthew chapter 28, verse 1, Mark 16, 9 to 12, Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. In Matthew 28 and 1, Jesus appeared to the other women that had buried him. In Mark 16, 12 to 13, Luke 24, 13 to 32, Jesus appeared to two of his disciples, Cleophas and another, on the road to Emmaus. In 1 Corinthians 15, 5, Luke 24, 33 to 35, the news of the appearance of Jesus God to Simon Peter. I'm teaching you about the reality, the evidence, the evidential things I'm presenting. The Bible calls us, we are to be witnesses. It don't mean go around and witness door to door. No, witness means to give evidence of the reality to present a legal document. That's what to be a witness means. Of the reality of Christ. I'm here to give of the reality of Christ. In Mark 16 and 14, Luke 24, 36 to 42, Jesus, this is the fifth appearance, Jesus appeared to the astonished disciples when Thomas was absent. In John 20, 26 to 31, Jesus appeared to the disciples the next Sunday following his resurrection. Or in John chapter 21, verse Jesus appeared to the seven disciples beside the Sea of Galilee and ate with them. In Matthew 28, 16 to 20, Mark 16, 15 to 18, Jesus appeared to the 11 disciples on the Mount of Galilee before he ascended into heaven. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 6, Jesus appeared to the 500, which we talked about, and James and the other disciples. In Luke 24, 49 to 49, 44 to 49, and Acts 1, 3 to 8, Jesus appeared to the disciples with another commission. In Luke 24, we saw that. He appeared to them. This is evidence of his appearance. Let me get to a few more things before we continue to defend the power of the keys to the resurrection. Acts, Acts 2 and 31, the powerful keys to the kingdom of God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What am I presenting? Jesus was and is alive and he showed himself to over 500 plus individuals after he rose from the dead. Not to prove, not only he did he allow that, but he also allowed the disciples, when he walked through that room, to put their hands in his hand, see the nail print in his feet, and put their hand in his side. Acts chapter 2, verse 31. What does it read? He seeing this before spake, this is Peter, of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh corruption this Jesus had God raised up well for we are all witnesses they had a witness to his resurrection Acts chapter 4 verse 2 being grieved this is the Sanhedrin the Sadducees the priests why were they still upset being grieved verse Acts chapter 4 verse 2 being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead Acts 4 and 33. And with great power. This is key to your ministry. This is key to your life. This is key to my life. I, you know what? I believe a lot of Christians, a lot of people around the world have become powerless because they keep forgetting the resurrection. If you were to remind yourself from this day going forward about the resurrection, you will not be depressed. You will not be stalemate. You will not be angry. You will not be bitter. Hallelujah. You will not compete. Some of these ministries, some of you watching here, you'll compete because you don't know the power of the resurrection and the fullness. Why? Because you, you feel it's about you. You're full of the flesh. Don't you listening? Others are watching. Hallelujah. You, you, you feel that the, res, ah, the church is about you. No, this church is about the blood of Jesus and the resurrection. I watched some things. My wife and I did it. I'm going to tell you before I get to Acts chapter 2, what I'm reading now, 33. I watched some of these Facebook preachers, <clears throat> some of the popular ones, 
they didn't preach on the blood and the resurrection of the cross, I was so embarrassed. But I said to my wife, we looked at it, we said, oh my God. You know why? Some of them are so used to stirring up problems in the body of Christ. But when it comes to teaching on the blood of Jesus, they don't know a thing about it. When it comes to the cross, they don't know the power of the cross. The Bible says it's the preaching of the cross. That's the power of God and the salvation. I don't want to hear about a blessing and my destiny and my purpose and, and what's going to happen in my life. I don't want to hear about this during the time. I want to hear about the blood that never loses its power. I want to hear about the blood that the world needs to hear of. We have people watching us from Pakistan and the Middle East and Malaysia and Asia and people throughout the continent of Africa and all through the world, South America, Central America, North America, who are lost, who are afraid, who are frightened. They don't want to hear these marshmallow gospels. They want to hear about the blood that never changes. They want to hear about the preaching of the cross. What does the cross mean to my life now? What is this resurrection? How does it relate to me? Did Jesus really raise from the dead? And if he did, show me in scriptures. Show me something that proves he is alive. And he was and he is proven to be alive. Praise God. Many have lost the bolus. But today you're coming back to your power in the resurrection. If that's you, shout Jesus. Somebody type Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Somebody just lift up the name of Jesus right now and give him praise wherever you are. Let us know you're watching. We're getting ready to pray for you. We're getting ready to release this power. The Bible said if you know Jesus Christ as Lord, you've accepted His Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you and I. I'm going to tell you what that means in a few minutes. So Acts chapter 4, verses 32, and the Bible said, And with great power gave the apostles witness. Now, it didn't say they witnessed the people. The word witness means to give evidence. Through the preaching, it says. Through their lifestyle. You must know and believe that Jesus is real. If you, with great power, most of the church has lost power. Most people who call themselves Christians have no power. No power to heal. No power to cast out devils. No power to overcome the sin and the work of death. No power over life. But if you accept Jesus Christ and you receive his resurrection revelation today, you will have power. That's why during this time, most people who should be talking about Jesus, they are afraid trying to stockpile food and toiletries. They are humpered down and they are afraid day by day. But those who are power of the resurrection are on the phones praying for people. They are preaching the word. They are giving witness that Jesus is alive because I am here, because I've been transformed, because I am changed, because I share with such passion. I have had a serious touch with this resurrected Jesus. That's why I speak the way I do. That's why I talk the way I do. That's why I live the way I live. That's why I believe the way I believe. And I pray that for everyone. And so Acts chapter 4 said, And with great power, say power, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. With great power they did it. They had a conviction because they saw him in his resurrection. And great grace was given to them all. Acts 17 and 32. Because they had the resurrection power, you can have the same power. You might not have seen him physically, but you have experienced his resurrection power through the preaching of his word. You have been saved. You have victory. And if you don't have victory, we're going to pray that you have victory today because this resurrected Jesus has so much power that everything around him and his people are around in the earth will live if it's dead. How do I know? Acts 17 verse 32. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. Another said, we will hear thee again on this matter. Because Paul was preaching 
the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Many laugh at him. I want to let you know the world is laughing because they cannot understand. Because Buddha, Confucius, Satan, demons, devils, hallelujah, Krishna, hallelujah, oh, all the gods of the world, they have never rose from the dead. Their idols, their statues, their gods that they feed and appease, their invisible gods have never talked to them. They have never seen him come alive. They're great teachers. They're great philosophers. They're wise men. They're scribes. None of them rose from the dead. Only our Jesus. Praise God. Romans. Let's go here. Romans chapter 6 verse 5. Romans 6 verse 5 says. Keys to the kingdom of God. For if we are being planted together in the likeness of his death. You got to die to Christ. You got to die to flesh and die, crucify this flesh. The Bible says we must crucify this flesh. If we crucify this flesh with the lust and the desires and the evil and the evil things, this Adamic nature, Jesus, the second Adam, if we leave the first Adam and we cling to Jesus, the second Adam, the pure blood of Jesus, the resurrected one, what's going to happen? We shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. If we've been planted in his death, we will be planted in his resurrection. Praise God. Philippians chapter 3. I'm going somewhere. Philippians chapter 3, verses 10. I want you to get in your Bible. Philippians chapter 3. Where am I going with this? I'm telling you right now. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. We're talking about the resurrection and the power that's in it. That's going to be released. This Jesus who was sinless died rose himself from the dead. He never died again and he still lives and he lives forever. He's never going to die again. And because of that, he has power to raise you and I, not only in the resurrection, but every dead thing in your life that the Lord, every vision, every dream, every sickness must die in your life in the name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 3, verses 10. Paul said this. What did Paul say? That I don't hear a lot of people who say they know Jesus talk about. He said that I might know him. Who is him? That I might know Jesus. And the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his suffering. Being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. Paul said, we must know him. Paul was saying, Lord, let me have a revelation. Let me know you, not only in your life, not in your blood stain, not only in the cross, not in your healing, not only in your deliverance, not in you being Lord and King and King of this powerful kingdom. If I accept you, but I want to know you in the power of your resurrection. What was Paul saying? I want to know this Jesus in the power of how he rose from the dead. I asked him the same thing this week. I said, Lord, if I can know you in the power of your resurrection, what is that? I want to know how is it that you rose from the dead? How is it that you still live with power? What's going to happen with me? Like Paul said, if I may attain to know, that may I apprehend, I may understand, I may comprehend what it means to be in the resurrection. What does it mean for me? What does it mean for everything? Hallelujah. It means, hallelujah, that I may know you in the power of this resurrection. You know, if you tap into the power of the resurrection, you won't be afraid to lay hands on the sick. I've laid hands on many, many, many sick, just even being a physician. But I'm telling you, if you got the power, revelation of the power of the resurrection, you, you, if, you know, as you lock down, if someone in your life or family is sick, you lay hands on yourself and command life and curse that. You have the power of the resurrection. I mean... If you know the power of the resurrection any into your life, you could use the power of the blood and the power of the resurrected one from the dead. 
You could open your mouth. You could speak to your life. You could speak to your situation because it's not you. It is Christ in you. You have the resurrected one in you. You won't be afraid of someone who is corona. You will speak. They don't need to, you don't need to touch them. If you believe in the power, you will call someone up with corona and say, I curse corona. I command your body to arise by the power of the resurrected Jesus right now. That's the same power they had. That's why they rose people from the dead. That's why they lived victoriously. I'm bringing this home. Praise God. First Peter. Peter 1 and 3. Are you with me? If you're there, just shout resurrection. I know it's a long word. Say, he is alive. First Peter 1 and 3. Peter speaking, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope. How did Christ, how did, how did he bring us into a lively hope? If anything is dead in your life, I speak life right now. Not by my words only, but how did he do it? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let me read that again. First Peter. 1 verses 3, blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us. He has begotten, he has birthed us unto a lively hope. I want to let you know you should be alive more than anyone else. While people are afraid and sick and dying and, and just afraid to live, it's not about living and dying. When you are in Christ, I'm telling you, you should have hope. I believe on that final day. I've asked the Lord about it. He said, those who are my resurrection power, I know it. On that great day, every person that is dead, I'm going to let the angels blow the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall arise. How will the angels know? Because you're going to have that resurrection power in you. Praise God. I might not look like nothing to you. You might not look like anything to some other people. People might not think you're important or significant. But I want to let you know there's no little resurrection power in me and great in you. There's no great resurrection power in me and little in you. We have all the same Holy Ghost resurrection power that any preacher, pastor, or any person around the world has. That's the power of God. That's the key I wanted to share. You have the same resurrected power that Jesus gave to the early church. You are no different. That same resurrection power is going to quicken our mortal body and we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and the trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall arise. That's what's going to awaken us. That resurrection power that's in your blood right now. Praise God that's flowing through your veins right now. If only you could tap into it, you will never suffer another day in your life. Am I saying it's not going to be hard? Yeah, it's going to be some things that life the enemy throws, but you will overcome because you have resurrection power. If Jesus could overcome the grave, you could overcome every circumstance. Praise God. Woo! Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto lively hope. How? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To what? He resurrected you and I through Jesus' resurrection. To what? To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that faded not away. Reserved in heaven for you. I know we talk about life, but we like this life. Through the resurrection of Jesus, we have something, an inheritance, reserved, unfaded, never to change, pure. And what is that? It's reserved in heaven. How do I know? Because it's there. Praise God. Now let's go to our final scripture verse. If you need to warm it up, Sham, just go ahead. 1 Corinthians. I'm going to read this passage. I'm going to close in 1 Corinthians. And I'm getting ready to pray for you. I'm going to release an anointing. You better get some people on here quickly. I, I, I'm not talking some funny word. I, I want to bring you straight from the scripture. Pastor, why you take so long? Why? Because I want to take time to just teach you the word. I don't want you going on what pastors say or what bishop or some prophet say. And I'm a prophet. But I put down just prophesying to people because I want to prophesy the word of God now. You don't need to hear what I say. You need to hear what the word of God say. 
Hallelujah. Some of us spend more time watching Netflix than being in the Word of God. That's not going to bring you victory in this hour. Turn those TVs off. Turn those movies off. Hallelujah. And spend some time in the Word of God. Turn those TVs off and just spend some time in the Word. You, when you're watching movies, some people were online. You were online all last night watching movies. Can't you spend an hour or two on the teaching? The teaching of the word, the resurrection power of the word, seems so long to some people. But watching episodes after episodes for six, seven hours means nothing to some. I leave that alone. Not for you. That's for the other viewers. 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 1. Sorry, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1. We're going to read this passage up. I want you to get it. This is loaded. It's going to explain everything I just said. How do I know? Let's read it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1. Did you have it? If you have it, say amen. Get your Bibles. Get it quickly. Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, Paul is speaking, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. I'm going to skip through. Verse 3, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I have received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to scriptures watch and that he was seen of cephas one and the 12 two and after what he was seen of above 500 we don't know 500 plus jesus was seen after he rose from the dead that's my key scripture today keep remembering that circle that in your bible at once they were all seen of him at once of whom the greater part remain unto present, but some have fallen asleep. Some have died, but some are still alive. When Paul wrote this, after that he was seen of James, then he was seen of the apostles. At last of all, he was seen of Paul as one born out of due season. Watch this. Verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church of Jesus Christ. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. Verse 12. Watch this now. This is the power of God. The keys now. And I'm going to pull them all out so you can get it. Number one. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some of you that there is no resurrection of the dead? There was, I mean, Jesus rose from the dead, but some were still doubting. Do you know there are many people who call themselves Christians today and people around the world who are not Christian who doubt the resurrection of Jesus Christ after Jesus showed himself? But watch this. Paul said in verse 13. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain and your faith is in vain. If Jesus Christ is not, did not rise from the dead and is not alive, all of this, what we're doing now, you watching, me preaching, all the preachers around the world from Jesus' time to now, the mega churches, the big ministry, the churches, the Bible, praise and worship, everything we did, tithe, offering, Ah, the resurrection, the passion, all of that is in vain. My God, we've wasted our lives. If Jesus didn't raise from the dead, your faith is in vain. Verse 15, yea, and we found false witnesses. If Jesus didn't raise from the dead, I am a false witness. And every other person who ever picked up this Bible, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead raised not. For if the dead raised not, then is not Christ raised. Verse 17, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. Ye are yet in Christ. This is the power of God. If Jesus is not raised from the dead, you and I are all still sinners. We are lost. And every funeral and homegoing service that we said and encouraged people that they are gone to see Jesus and they died in Christ and we buried them and we sang all those wonderful hymns of the streets of gold and oh, when I see Jesus, they're all lies because every one of them, if Jesus is not really risen like he said, 
Every person we put down into the grave is lost and is dead and is gone forever. Jafara, God bless you, sister. And yet in your sins, I mean, we are all sinners. Every single human being from the time of Jesus to now are all sinners if Jesus didn't raise from the dead. Then they also which are dead in Christ are perished. If in this life we hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. If we only holding on to Jesus Christ, because he rose from the dead, we are miserable, we are lost, and we're defeated if he didn't raise from the dead. But now is Christ risen from the dead. Praise God. Woo! Christ is risen, he is saying. Therefore, we know that he is risen. And he's become the first fruit of the dead of them that sleep. Watch this now. For since by man came death. By man came also the resurrection. These verses are telling us everything Adam did in falling in the book of Genesis 1, 2, and 3. Jesus is coming now to reverse. What is that? For since by man, who's this man? Adam came dead. By Jesus. This is why Jesus had to come and raise from the dead. By man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died... Even so, in Christ, all shall be made alive. Praise God. This is the power of the resurrection. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Oh my God. You don't have to be afraid. Then come at the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and all power, because Jesus rose from the dead, he is coming back with a powerful kingdom. This kingdom, he is going to restore all things, living and dead. Every human being, life and dead. Hallelujah. All of the planets, everything that's under the kingdom, the rulership and authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, because his resurrection, he's going to restore all things. Praise God. This resurrection was more than just having hot cross bun and fried fish today and wearing bright, beautiful colors. This resurrection is because Jesus has all power now, once again in heaven and in earth every saint to rule and reign with him. How do I know? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 25 said, uh, for he must reign uh, till he had put all enemies under his feet because Jesus rose from the dead. Every enemy is finally defeated. Demons, devils. Uh, when Satan attacks you, let him know because of the resurrection, Satan, you are defeated because demons, you better come out. I command you when they attack your life, you command them to come out in the name of Jesus because uh, the resurrected one has defeated them. Hallelujah. What do you mean? Every defeat, every sickness, every torment, everything that hindered your life because of who you serve. He is the resurrected one. And if he overcame death, hell, and the grave, he has all power in his body to overcome everything. It's right here. 1527. For he had put all things under his feet. The key to the resurrection is everything is under the feet of Jesus. Oh God, some of you are worrying about Corona. Some of you are thinking about your job, your family, your loved ones. Everything is under the feet of Jesus. I want you to shout out right now. Everything is under the feet of my resurrected Jesus. You know what feet mean? It's under his authority. He got it under his control. He's taking care of everything concerning your workers, your business, your staff. It's already under his feet. Hallelujah. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be in all. Hallelujah. And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? If I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily, Paul said. If after the man of man I have fought with beasts of Ephesus, 
What advantage it me if the dead raise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Paul is saying, if Jesus don't really raise from the dead, and this resurrection thing is not real, eat, drink, be happy, live your life, because you're going to die, and you would have YOLO. Verse 35, but some men will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which you sow is not quickened except it die. That which thou sowest, thou sow not that body that should be. But God give it a body as it had pleased him, and to every seed his own body. What is it saying now? Verse 42, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised incorruptible. What if all of that is saying is you and I have corruptible bodies. We have bodies that no matter how much exercise and vitamins and nutrition and supplement you take and that's good as a doctor I tell patients do it all the time no matter what you do it's corrupted it's gonna die babies have died in mother's wombs they've died right afterwards they've died as toddlers they've died as teens they've died as young adults they've died elderly no matter your age your nationality white black Hispanic Native American Indian wherever you are in the world Asian African White, black, European, Americans all have a corrupt flesh. It's going to die. It's going to perish if we live long enough. Should the Lord Jesus not come, it's going to perish. Not only is it going to perish one day, but your body and mind sometimes have aches and pains and weaknesses. It has uh, oh, uh, weak spots. You have weaknesses in your life. There, there are some human frailties. Glory to God. And this coronavirus has taught us every human being, no matter rich, poor, black, white, no matter your, it doesn't matter your profession or your nationality or your status or how much money you have in the bank, how many cars or houses or riches you have, we all have a corrupt fleshly body that is breaking down and that is moving towards destruction every day. Because of Adam, our bodies have the propensity. But this body, just like Jesus, that is sown in corruption, will take on incorruptible character one day. Glory to God. Ooh, Jesus. If that's all I hold on to for the rest of my life, that's more than enough of a blessing to leave sin and evil. The fact that this body, I'm going to have a new body. You only ain't see nothing yet. Praise God. Hallelujah. You think this body is something else? Wait till I have my new body. Who? Glory to God. Wait till I have blemish. Wait till I have back aches that never comes. Wait till you have, hallelujah, body free from diabetes and hypertension and high cholesterol. You don't know what it is. Hallelujah. We don't know what an incorruptible body is because we've been born with these bodies that fade and break down. Hallelujah. You this, the pure skin. Hallelujah. I wish I, hey, hey, glory to God. We spend millions of dollars to get our skin looking right. Hallelujah. We spend million, billions of dollars on hair care products to get our hair looking right. Do you imagine Jesus is going to do that instantly? Oh my God. I can't wait to have my new hair. Hallelujah. I can't wait to have my new skin. Why? We're not coming back as lizards and frogs. When Jesus gives us an incorruptible body just like Adam, we're going to have that same body. A body. I'm going to be able to recognize you. I'm not coming back as an angel. That is unscriptural. I'm not coming back with wings. The devil is a liar. Nowhere in scripture it says that when we die and Jesus rose, raises from the dead, we're going, to have, we're going to gain wings. That is mystery. That's lies. That is a phony tale. That is heresy. That is some ancient religion. We're coming back with these same bodies. I'm going to be able to recognize you. You're going to be able to recognize me. How do I know? Because when Jesus rose from the dead, he had the same body. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were able to see his eyes, his ears, but it was glorified. It was without sin. It was without blemish. It had eternal life flowing through his vein. It wasn't the blood of man. It was the spirit of God that flowed through his veins that gave him life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! Verse 43, it is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. 
It is so a natural body is raised a spiritual body. That's what I just talked about. There is a natural body and there's a spiritual body. Also, it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, Jesus, was made a quickening spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus spiritual and glorified. Even not to have sin in it. We don't understand what that means fully. We're so used to evil thoughts, practicing evil, living out the desires of the flesh. Do you know what it is to have a body that is free from sin, the desire to sin, the desire to hate, to curse, to fornicate, to drink adultery, to drink alcohol, to smoke marijuana, to be angry, to be jealous, to be hateful, to be bitter, to be abusive. Glory to God. Ah. It's so beyond our comprehension. I'm bringing this to a close. Get some people on. I'm getting ready to pray for this power of God to flow on your life. How do I know? I've laid hands on my wife and I, and we've seen the sick raised. Come here, woman of God. I'm going to let my wife come back on here. We're getting ready to pray. Verse 47, the first man is of the earth. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. As is the earth, such as they also that are earthly. Now this, verse 50, now this, I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You cannot inherit the fullness of God's kingdom and just the flesh and blood. It's by the spirit of the Lord. This resurrected Jesus came to give you the spiritual power in your life. Yes. Neither that corruption inherit incorruptible. 1 Corinthians 50 and 51, we're going to the end. Get ready for this now. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, hallelujah, but we shall be changed, glory to God. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. This is the hope of our Christian faith. Not a house, not a car, not a blessing, not a pastor, not a minister, not going to church. We are the church. Our greatest hope is if and when we live this life in Christ Jesus, we've accepted him as Lord. We make him Lord of our lives one day. Very soon. We're going to be changed instantly. Praise God. Oh, glory to God. We, we're, not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not. When Jesus comes, he's going to allow the, the angels to blow. You can almost hear it now. We can almost hear the sound of heaven. Hallelujah. Glory. And in a moment, snap your finger. Snap your finger. That quick. In a moment, in a twinkling, blink your eye. Oh. As fast as that is. The minute you took, the second you take, to blink your eye, this old body, Shotorebesia, is going to go from sin, death, disease, destruction. Death and despair is going to go from, 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 from fear and failure and, and, and conviction and destruction. Yes, Jesus. To a spiritual body that's powerful. Mm. And everyone that died in Christ, their bodies shall be changed. No matter where they died. No matter where they died. Some who the fish have eaten, sadly. Some who went to the bottom of the ocean and the body decomposed. Some who body the fish ate. Some who, oh, they, they, the bodies were hidden in the soil somewhere and no one knew where they were. They were lost and never to be found. Some whose bodies were, 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 were lost in other countries. All of a sudden from around the world, every place where that body, those bones. Bones. Burnt. Lost burnt. In, lost in plane crash. Lost in, in car crash. Car crash. Plane crash. They're going to all come together. Woo! Suddenly, instantly. Jesus. My God. We shall be changed. 
For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal shall put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immorality, then shall be brought to pass the saying it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. I want to let you know <laughs> death is going to be swallowed up. Yes. People are not afraid of Corona or TB or HIV or COVID. You know, there's some people who are afraid to take a plane even before this Corona. They're not afraid of the plane. They're afraid of dying in a plane crash. That's right. It's the fear of death. They're not afraid of boats. They're afraid of dying in a boat. That's right. They're not afraid of the water. They're afraid of dying from drowning. That's right. They're not afraid of centipede. They're afraid of centipede stinging them. They get an infection and die. And then the centipede they're afraid of. Likewise, people are not afraid of corona. They're afraid of dying from corona. Rage man of God. Death is swallowed up. Ooh, the fear of death. I can't wait for that because every so often we all get little pains and aches. And the fear of death wants to creep his ugly head up. Woo! And if, even if it's not pain or aches, it's just afraid. Not only afraid of death, we are afraid to stand up and live for Christ because we feel people are going to persecute us. Some people are afraid to stand up for Christ in nations around the world because they will lose their head and lose their lives. And if it's not physical death, some people are afraid of spiritual death. What does it mean? If I live for Christ, my family is going to ostracize they're going to kill me. I'm going to be counted as dead. I've met people. We've met people all across Southeast Asia as we travel there. We're getting ready to pray for you. We've been in Asia. We've been in Southeast Asia many, many times. We met people who their family totally consider them dead because they made Jesus Christ their Lord. So death is swallowed up in victory. It reads, O oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where's thy victory? We're going to see some people alive again. Death will have no more power. The grave will have no more victory. What a day that's going to be. I will be so excited when there's no more funerals. <laughs> Praise God. I know some people love funerals. They love going to funerals. They love the, the, the songs. They love the singing. They love the flowers. They love the, what you call that thing the night before? The wake. The awake. Or the nine nights. The nine nights and then the next day, the party. I don't like all that stuff. I like <laughs> life. I don't want no more funerals. I don't want no more burial. I don't want no more dressing up. I, 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 some, some people, you know, there's some people who like going around the that's funeral right, and collecting the right. obituaries. That's <laughs> right. that's God. I don't I like that. Uh, you know some Four of them. Four or five funerals in a day. Four or five funerals. I don't like that. Praise God. I don't like going to no bunch of funerals. I don't like it. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you, I can't wait for this to be fulfilled. First Corinthians 15. Verses 55, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? I can't wait so that we don't have to put nobody down in the grave anymore. Praise God, I'm tired. The sting of death is sin. The resurrected Jesus is going to destroy death, the grave, the sting of grave, and sin once and forever. Praise be to God. And the strength of sin is the Lord. But thanks be to God, which given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's read. Get together. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I want to let you know that our labor in Christ is not in vain. No. Because of the resurrection. Glory. Because he rose from the dead. Jesus. I'll recap. All power has been given unto him in heaven and earth. He was seen of over 500 people. 1 Corinthians said it. Cephas and the 12 and then the 500. We have to know him in the power oh, yes. of his resurrection, Paul said. In the fellowship of his suffering. Oh, yes. 
And if Christ be not risen, we are all dead. We're defeated. We've wasted our time. Go on and live your life. But we know that he is alive. Jesus. Therefore, we have resurrection power. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead. You tell Hallelujah him. is in you and I. It's in you and I. <laughs> Glory. And that same spirit is going to quicken our mortal bodies. Oh, yes. Death and the grave and sin will have no more power mm -hmm. starting from today over our lives. If I didn't know Jesus, I'd get to know him. <laughs> you don't have to be afraid of death or dying. Or what happens afterwards. There is no other teacher, philosopher, mm. doctrine in all of the world, past, present, or in the future Tell it, my God. that will ever compare. I don't just serve Jesus out of, you know, growing in a country that you hear the gospel. No, I've studied the religions of the world and none of them give me the assurance of eternal life. And the peace that surpasses all understanding. And the peace mm. that brings to our hearts knowing that we're going to live again. I thank Buddha for his teaching, but he didn't teach on. Well, first of all, he didn't die and rose from the dead. Jesus is the only one in history who died and rose himself from the dead. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, if anyone could beat that, then we can have a conversation. But as far as we know, there's no one who was bad and big and powerful and awesome enough to not only, he didn't die, he had to give up his life. That's right. Because he had no right. sin in his life. That's right. And so sin couldn't kill him. He had to give up his life. And because he gave up his life, he laid down. And he said, I'm going to take it back up. That's he? right. <laughs> Get ready. Shalev and I are about to pray for you. Because he lived. <laughs> he is the first begotten from the grave. He get that died. Word, people ah, get go it, ahead. Get it, get it. Amen. That is just. Woo. He said, I will lay down my life. Jesus laid down his life because death couldn't kill him. <laughs> Disease couldn't take him. The grave couldn't hold him. He said, I'm going to lay my life down and I'm going to pick it up when I'm ready for it. On the third day, he did it. And he lives still now and forever. And because of that, he is the only one in the history of humanity that could give hope to the world. So this Jesus Christ promises that if we believe in him, we will have eternal life. Not in the future, but beginning now. And he will quicken your body. He will destroy the works of sin, death, the grave, the fear of death. He is taking the keys of hell, death, and the grave. He's taking the keys of fear and the fear of death from every person. And he has given us victory. Praise be to God. Shalabah is going to lead you in a prayer. Those who want to make Jesus Christ their Lord on this Resurrection Sunday, thank you for watching. She is going to lead you into a prayer of salvation. Then we're going to pray together to pray that the resurrected Jesus comes alive in your life. Whatever you have done, you might have backslidden. It's time to come back home. It's time to come back home. And that's you today, and you need a special prayer. There's healing flowing from this place into this airwaves. You need healing for your body. I've seen many supernatural, miraculous healing in our lives and in the lives of others through this resurrected Jesus and through his blood. Your special need, put it here. There's no need of anything. He can provide it. Hallelujah. If you receive this message today, if you heard this message and your understanding was open, you got a revelation, you get it. You know about the power. Not only know about the power, but felt that power today, then this is your time to pray. Many of you, because of so many things, you got this courage yes. uh, with, with the body of Christ, with the church, with, with going to a building. Mind you, the word of God said to not forsake ourselves with the gathering of the saints. But Jesus himself, when he met that woman of the, at the well, he said that the time will come when we, paraphrasing, when we wouldn't worship him in a building, so to speak, 
but we will worship him in spirit and in truth. So would you open up your heart today and yes. join me, hallelujah, Come on. from this moment forward to worship Jesus Christ in spirit and in truth. Open your heart right yes. now to receive the revelation, to receive that power, hallelujah, that rose him from the dead. Just repeat after me. Hallelujah. Even if you are saving, you've been saving, you know that in your heart, then say it. Hallelujah today. And for some of you with loved ones who are in despair, just have them on your mind. Hallelujah. And just include them. Just say for me or just say for my family yes. and try to include them in what I'm saying prophetically today in the yes. name of Jesus. Now repeat after me, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I accept Jesus Christ. I accept Jesus Christ. As my Lord. As my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Deliver me. Deliver me. Heal me. Heal me. Set me free. Set me free. Hallelujah. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And Lord. And Lord. You said, Hallelujah. You said that no one, no one can take you, ta can, can take us, can take us out of the palm of your hands. Out of the palm of your hands. And so, and so, I belong to you. I belong to I you. I repent of all of my sins. I repent of all my sins. I forgive those who sinned against I me. I forgive those who sinned against me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For coming into my life now. For coming into my life I now. I declare the victory over my life. I declare the victory over my in life. In Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. And the peace. And the peace. That surpass it all understanding. Surpass it all understanding. I know you and I know that you know me. And I know that you know me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that Amen. prayer, hallelujah. Just praise, give the Lord a praise this morning. Hallelujah. hallelujah. For what he has done. Glory hallelujah. be to the name of your Lord. Thank Amen. you, Shalewa. Hallelujah. I want to just, as you're on this, thank you for joining us. We are so delighted to have you. Let me tell you something. <laughs> if you said that prayer today, you've made Jesus Christ your Lord. I've, I've searched it. All the religions, all the teachers of the world, and I'm telling you, this Jesus Christ just makes sense to me, man. Are we perfect? No, we're far from perfect. But I want to let you know that we we just we just trust the Lord Jesus Christ, His resurrected power to keep us going every day. He's the only one that gives us hope. There's no hope in this world. This world. It is in a troubled time. I truly believe these are the last days, whether it's now or in the months to come. These are, these are the last of the last days. Not because of Corona or an outbreak. It's just the coming of the Lord is very near. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a teacher. But just in your own heart, just say, Lord Jesus, I believe you. 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 This. This gospel makes sense. It just makes sense to just, you know, as you look back at this Jesus, and, and you know, he's the only one in history that gives us hope. Yes. He's the only one that gives us hope for salvation and hope for tomorrow. You know, I couldn't imagine what can I tell my family during this time? What can I tell my wife and kids during this time? There's nothing I can tell them. The only hope I could give them is, listen here. You know, in Christ we have hope. If we live or die, it doesn't matter. If we have Christ, we shall raise again with power. I want you to go back over this teaching. I know some of them are long, but I want to show you scripture upon scripture, uh, what the word says. Go back and listen to the previous teachings, and you will definitely, you will see, you will see in the teachings. Uh, we talked about the blood and other things. It's going to bless your life. It's going to truly bless your life. If you have a prayer request today, I want you to put it there. We're going to be praying for yes. you. Father, I pray oh, yes. Yes. right yes. now yes. Yes. by the faith, yes. not in who we are, because we are nothing, yes. Lord. Yes. We are just vessels. We are just servants. But we come Jesus. in the name of this Bible, in the name Father, of the name. Jesus yes. Christ of Nazareth, yes. the one who yes. shared it. His blood on the cross so that the world may be saved. Yes. We are living witness that this Jesus who died is alive and is well because he lives in us. He speaks to us. He talks to us. And if you accept him as Lord, he lives in you. And I want to let you know today, I want to let you know today, this same Jesus will touch your life. I pray for people who are troubled. I pray for people right now. You are in such 
you know the truth, but you are so tied down with so many things, you feel like you cannot get free. But the Lord has caused this. He didn't cause corona, but he's allowed this time with corona to give you a one-on-one -on -one chance to say, Lord, all the stuff that I thought was important is really not important. Yes. All of the stuff that I thought was meaningful is really could be taken away instantly. Yes. And we're back face to face, not church, not a religion, not a denomination. I'm asking you to come face to face with Jesus Christ as Lord. Share this. Tell somebody. I pray for everyone listening and watching. I pray that the Lord reveals himself to you. He's revealed himself to us the same way and a greater way to touch your life. Not what a man said, not what a priest or a pastor said, but that you would know him for yourself. That he will reveal, reveal himself through his word, through his scripture, through his Holy Spirit to you. That you will know, yes! That this Jesus is Lord and I ought to surrender my life to him. And I ought to get my family to live for him. And I ought to give my heart to him. And I ought to live my life. And I ought to turn away from sin. And I ought to turn away that everything that displeases him. Because the only thing that's going to matter when this life comes to an end is what we did for Christ. I pray you come to that truth today. Some of you, your dreams are being shattered. I pray God gives you peace because it's shaking right now. Everything in the world is shaking. Companies are shaking. Businesses are shaking. Finances are shaking. Everything in the world is shaking. It's shaking. It's shaking. Economies are shaking. Every industry in life is shaking. And I know it's uncertain. Many of you, your dreams, your investments, your plans for your family and your children are being shattered. I want you to know that the Lord gives you his peace right now. Yes, I release peace. Come on, pray. Come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. Share this, quickly. Share this with someone who needs peace. I pray peace. I pray you don't commit suicide. I break that spirit of suicide. I break drunkenness. I break that desire to want to throw in the towel because you're broken. I, I pray peace. Woo, it's going to get tighter. I want to let you know it's going to get tighter. Things are going to get tighter. Tighter. Tighter, tighter. Hallelujah. There's going to be questions this week. I see it right now. Where's the money going to come? Monies are running low. Food in the cupboards are running low and you need an answer. Jobs are still closed and they don't know when they're going to open up. I'm praying for your peace. Oh God, pray. Woman of God. Oh, begin to pray. Oh, Minister to some people. Oh, we lift up this, Come on, this pray. person. We lift up our brother and our sister, Lord God, before you. Oh God, your word declare that you shall supply all of their need according to your riches and glory. Father, let them faint not, but know that their hope is in you, Lord God. Let them know, oh God, hallelujah, that wherever they have, they would have searched, Lord God, whatever they would have done, Lord God, the hope that they would have placed in man and even in themselves, Lord God, it is nothing but vain, Lord yes. God. It is nothing but vanity, Lord God. But once they trust in you, Oh, Father, I declare your word upon them, Lord God, to trust in the Lord with all of their might, Lord God, and lean not to their own understanding, yes, yes, but with yes. all of their ways acknowledge you that you may direct their path, Lord God. And Father, even as you did, oh God, with Hallelujah, with the prophet Elijah and the woman, Lord God, with the oil. Father, we ask that you multiply their oil this morning, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. For you, oh God, you said that, oh Father, just if whatever we ask for, Lord God, any good thing that we ask our Father for, in the name of Jesus, you, oh God, you will not give us anything good yes. or evil. And so, Lord God, we ask you for that manna, oh God, from heaven to come down in their life, Lord God. God, physically in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak life, Lord God, in life the mighty in name, the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Curse the power of the spirit of death in their life right now. Yes. In Jesus' name. We curse, Lord God, those demons, hallelujah, of torment in the mind in of the your name people. Of Jesus. Oh God, for them to hate, for, oh God, for them to have malice, oh God, for them to fight against the one another in their household, in Jesus' name. But Father, I yes. put your word in their <laughs> mouth yes. that they shall live, oh God, and every demon of darkness will be destroyed, Lord God, and only with their eyes they will look and and see you Lord God they will look upon you from which cometh yes. their help because it is only in you oh God our help only cometh from the Lord yes. and so we rebuke hallelujah that spirit 
of torment, yes. of judgmental spirit yes. prevailing in the Lord. homes of your people right now. We bind it and render it powerless right now in the mighty Ooh. name of Jesus. Lift up your head in the name of Jesus. I command every gate, hallelujah, to open right now. And receive the king of glory. Your eye gate, your ear gate, hallelujah, your mouth gate, your heart be open right now to receive, receive the king of glory and to conquer every work of darkness and every attack yes. of Satan in the mighty name of Jesus. Though I release the spirit of God to arise in you right now. Be baptized again and afresh in the spirit of the living God and arise, hallelujah, arise and take yes. your rightful place and declare, hallelujah, that Jesus is your Lord and he will not fail and he will not falter in Jesus' name. Arise and go forward in victory in Jesus' name. In Hallelujah. Jesus name. I speak right now. I prophesy that someone, I shall, the prophetess shall ever say, there is someone, there are houses that are fighting right now. Yes. I speak peace to husband Break and wife right now. I speak peace to children right name. now. Uh, there's fighting, there's yes. contention in some home. The yes. word of the Lord, word Jesus. of knowledge came, and the woman of yes, God said, Lord. I speak peace to multiple homes in and Jesus families right now. Name. I say, put that knife down. I say, put Jesus. that knife down. I declare the there will be no Jesus. stabbing debts because of, of this time. I say that siblings be healed right now. Marriages Jesus. be healed right now. I speak it right now. Right now, I see, I break the power the of depression. Of I see some people right now going through a state of depression. The there is a Jesus. heavy depression in homes. I break it right now, wherever this is played. I want you to share this. Share this around the world. Wherever. Abuse, that's it. I declare abuse. Stop abusing that child uh -huh. and children in the name Ooh, of Jesus. It's not their fault. In the mighty name of Jesus, you put those instruments of abuse down in the name of Jesus and free those children yes. and let them live Jesus. in Jesus' name. Ooh, yes, Glory be yes, to the name Lord, of the Lord. abuse, whoever. Jesus. I pray that that spirit, demonic power that's causing some Jesus. parent to beat those children in because the they're frustrated. I break it. I in break that frustration. Jesus. I break in it. The, the cupboards are empty and abuse is in happening. I break Jesus. that. Ooh, I, I break that sexual abuse. Hallelujah, that father, that stepfather, that sexually abusing, hallelujah, that daughter, that son Jesus. right now during this time. I break that power. We break it. We break that spirit. We break it right now. You foul spirit of sexual abuse, abuse that's Jesus happening right name. now in homes. In the name of right Jesus. now in this lockdown, I break it. I break it. I break it. I expose it in the mighty name of Jesus. We break it and expose it. We break it and we expose it. Hallelujah. You husband, you put that fist down. In the mighty name of Jesus, that physical abuse in you're inflicting on that woman right now, I break Jesus. physical abuse. In Share this right now. Jesus. I break it off someone right now. Of you, Jesus. man, yes, right now, you're listening. You're listening yes, to this right now. Jesus. I command you in the name of Jesus name to of repent. Jesus. For the Lord said, if you touch that Jesus. woman one more time, I will expose you. I will expose you and destroy you. You man that's yes. abusing that woman, you that's beating that woman, you that's slapping that woman, you that's kicking that woman, we expose the judgment of the Lord against you as a prophet of God. I speak it. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. You mental abuse. You man, you woman, you boy, you girl. You that is, uh, you know, cursing and in. in Making that person feel inferior around yes. you. You that is tormenting that home. You that's yes. stirring a problem by cursing and then tormenting. Yes. We break your powers now in the mighty power. name of we Jesus. That mental abuse. That I, I see drunkenness. Lord, I break that drunkenness. Jesus. That drunkenness, wherever it is, in that household, that's bringing torment and fear to the children. You children that are under fear, I speak some child, some teenager that's yes. watching it. I speak healing to your house. I send the word by the resurrected Jesus to your house to bring peace to your house. You've been praying, Lord, if this abuse continues, I'm going to kill myself today. But I speak right now the spirit of the living God, the resurrected Lord. I send the angels of the Lord right now to go to that house where those teens are making plans to kill themselves. Hallelujah because they say they cannot take another oh, yes. day of the physical, sexual, yes, emotional Bible. abuse. We break it yes, that's in the right. mighty name of Jesus. That's right, that's right. You hoops, I've seen speak to some people. You yes, lost all your Jesus. savings and your job is Jesus. gone. You don't know where it's going to come. Yes. And the eviction notice and the bills are going to come in the next few days. You've already gotten some. You're making plans to just 
quietly kill yourself. Jesus. I break the power in of suicide of right now in the name of in Jesus. Name I declare Jesus. you are set free. As you stretch your hands and begin to pray, I want you to begin to pray and say, Jesus, just shout the name Jesus as we pray. The power of God is coming upon your life. The power of God is coming upon you. Those who with this doesn't relate to you, begin to pray because as you pray, you're going to be intervening somewhere in Italy, somewhere in Spain, somewhere in Alabama, somewhere in Georgia, somewhere in New York City, somewhere in London. Someone is about to commit suicide. Someone in South Africa, someone in India, India, Nepal. They're getting ready to throw in the tire. Power. They've lost everything in Toronto. I speak right now that the power of the blood of Jesus intervenes and the angel of the Lord come in Malaysia, in Indonesia, right now, in Nassau, hallelujah, in Kingston. It looks grim. It looks hopeless. But the blood of Jesus, yes. the resurrected one, will give you hope if you just yes. trust him. Day by day, he'll make a way. I don't know yes. how and I don't know when, but every day as you trust him, he'll make a way. In Jesus I speak it now in Jesus over your life in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Praise the Lord. Thank we love you. We're going to end here. We're going to continue to pray. We ask you to continue to post your prayer requests and pray with us. This is Dr. Kilafo Kali and Shalewa Kali. Hallelujah. Prophetess from Kingdom Apostolic Ministry International. I'm going to let Shalewa thank you all. Tell you where to tune in for more teaching. We're going to be on and she's going to just bless you and close out today's sermon and service today. It doesn't mean you have to stop praying. If there's more needs, continue to pray. Continue to worship. Shut down that TV and today let this be the day of a divine meeting with you and the Lord. We love you so much. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for those who stayed along with us. Deepak, we see you. Yes. Apostle Francis, God bless you. God Shannon, bless God you, bless Apostle. you. Yes. Prophet, all of you, the saints of God, if I didn't get your name, please put your name there so we can acknowledge you during this time if we can, before we turn out. If I didn't get to call you, thank you. You've been watching, you've been praying, you've been joining us, and we are so grateful. Continue to pray for all the other pastors and leaders and ministries and saints in this country and around the world. Continue to pray for the Lord. Shalewa's going to just give the benediction and just encourage you before you go and tell you where you can watch more and just close out as the Spirit of all as the Lord leads. God bless you in Hallelujah. Jesus' name. I just want to encourage you to let your mind be in Christ. As Apostle said today, just for the word of knowledge, just for today, just turn off everything. Let everything today just be in Christ. I know we watch movies and all kinds of things, but just turn it to YouTube. Many of us may not want to pick up the Bible physically. Just watch some faith-building content on YouTube, whether you want to watch a movie that is faith-building or just listen to the scriptures or the word of Christ, just spend today, or even prayer, even if you just come in half an hour, amen, just to kneel down before the Lord and just pray, when was the last time that you do that, amen, if you've been doing it all the time, we encourage you to just do that today, corporately, amen, as we worship and bless the Lord, thank you so much once again for watching, we love all of you, we pray for the body of Christ all around, in Jesus name, and we want to encourage you to watch Power and Glory TV, www.power and glory TV for more wonderful teachings as this, lifting up the name of Jesus. If you feel like you have a message to and you want to uh, send your message around the world, then you can also contact us so you can join, hallelujah, in declaring the kingdom of God. God bless you and we love you in Jesus' name. As the dear panted for the waters of my soul longing after thee you alone are my heart desire and I long to worship thee God bless you in Jesus name